This is Dolan TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel. And yeah, you know what? We're still in the midst of pause season. And now we've kind of got an update to something I was talking about the other day when I was talking about Marcus Niemelinen and Philip Berglund. We also talked a little bit about Philip Broberg, who had some news break about him in the past 20 hours or so. I was like getting to it. I didn't see it till about 9.30 last night, and then, I don't know, I totally missed it after that. I, I, guys, the pause season's got me all kinds of turned around. I can't imagine how much it has you turned around, as I'm sure now there's some questions as to who's working, who's not, that kind of deal. Are you essential? Are you not? Me, myself, guys, I'm essential. I continue on. So, that said, you know what? Let's not uh, worry too much about what Monday brings, shall we? Let's worry about what today brings in the news on Philip Broberg, in which Philip Broberg will be back in Sweden for yet another year of hockey, pro hockey. And this was right when I was talking to Niemelin and, and Berglund. I was talking about Broberg probably coming over to join them and form a new core of defensemen in Bakersfield. That is not looking to be the case. Broberg looking to stay in the SHL this season upcoming. And you know what? That's realistically not the worst thing, right? Is I think uh, the number one comparison right away, even noted in the Edmonton Sun article, is to Clefbaum. Clefbaum was brought along rather slow. And look at what he's turned into. A guy that, uh, well, when he's on the ice, the others win hockey games. That's the math. I know sometimes doesn't seem to add up, but the math says when... Oscar Clefbaum's on the ice. The Oilers win hockey games. So, you know what? We'll take it. And if we get another guy like that out of Philip Broberg, we will be good. We will be gold. We will be dandy. And Philip Broberg, guys, this is the uh, tough question, too. What did Broberg do this season in the SHL? Let me go get you Philip Broberg's stats because he had an interesting little year, I'd say. As Philip Broberg's stats at Elite Prospects. Let me get this for you. So. He went over to Skeleftia AIK on loan, right? That was where he was playing the year before, but uh, ended up playing, well, in the system. He wasn't playing there, but he was playing in the system. And then in the SHL this season, 45 games played, a total of a goal, 7 assists, and 8 ass uh, points total. Only 6 penalty minutes to speak of. He had an extra 10 points in uh, junior 20 play across Sweden. So that's good to see that includes the WJCs this year. And of course, any other international WJC kind of related stuff over in Europe. So for Broberg, right, eight points. Man, he's a number eight overall pick in an NHL entry draft. That's disappointing. Pardon me. Disappointing? Yes, Pugliarvi. Now, Philip Broberg, we still got time to work with him and we're working with him identically to how it should be done because what's going to happen for Broberg next season is he's going to jump to a bigger spot in Skeleftia. And what the, what I'm looking at here is similar to what we were talking about the other day with Berglund and Niemelin. And Niemelin and Berglund very, very, very likely now, due to this move, to be coming over, signing contracts, and playing with the Bakersfield Condors. There's almost no if, and, or but about it. If you want to build a defense for Bakersfield next year, you have to sign those guys and bring them in. There's no doubt about that. So those guys probably full well will come over and start playing. Well, Berglin is a top big player on the blue line for Skelefti, and I think there's another, I, I forget the name, but... There's another guy in Skeleftia that has moved on from the team. So that means you lose two big guys in the top four. That moves Philip Broberg into a lot more roles, right? Penalty killing roles, power play roles. And this from the Edmonton Sun article is simply put that we want to see... Where is it? Um, Ken Holland right here. We feel it's... an it's a good place at Skeleftia. Philip was happy this year, and we'd like to see him on more specialty teams next season. We'd like to have him come to our training camp this year to see what he looks like. So this is the interesting part for Philip Broberg, is that he gets to look at not only staying in Skeleftia, getting an increased role, getting specialty teams plays, which will absolutely increase those points for Broberg, but the other side too is the fact that the Oilers are counting on him coming over for training camp whenever the heck training camp takes place 
and then we get to see him at the pro level here in North America. And the interesting part about that is I would not be surprised if there is a little bit of a change of tune and suddenly it's like, okay, well, we'll keep you in Sklefti if we can work out a deal for half a year and then bring you over to Bakersfield at the end of the year, that kind of deal. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that works out because, you know what, it would be... Ideally, the best situation, right, is a year and a half in Skleftia, just enough to get him that increased role, allow him to handle an increased role at the professional level, then bring him over. I don't know how that would work. I, I don't think there's been any recent examples of too many guys doing that. I think there's been recent examples of guys going to the AHL and then fleeing overseas. I think this year it was Leas Anderson that ended up doing that with the New York Rangers. But you look at this situation, right, is... Philip Broberg, kind, kind of a unique spot because for Oilers fans, this is this is quite new. Yes, we didn't do it with Oscar Clefbaum, but Oscar Clefbaum actually turned out, so we're not going to panic. But rushing Philip Broberg wouldn't have been the right thing to do. Obviously, I think any of us that knew when we drafted him, rushing him would be absolutely stupid because that wasn't the guy any of us would have really drafted. I think everybody in my live stream... Uh, I had about 40 people, maybe two people out of those 40 that were chatting would say, yeah, Philip Roberg was the pick. So that's fine, right? Is taking our time is not the worst deal. And especially seeing how it worked last time with a top tier Swedish defender in Oscar Clefbaum, I'm, I'm more inclined to take as much time as necessary. Problem is with Philip Roberg, who really knows how much time is necessary because he just played pro hockey this year. That's... One goal, seven assists, eight points. That's about all that tells me is he played pro hockey. He didn't play power play. He didn't play elite level. He just played pro hockey. So we'll see what happens upcoming when he starts playing those bigger roles, those bigger minutes, starts getting a little bit more to his hockey game, a little bit more to his general kind of toolkit and see what Philip Roberg really starts looking like. Because Philip Roberg, you go back to those stats for a second here. Let me see if I can get my history tab. I always close tabs mid-video and it kills me. But Philip Roberg in the uh, U-20s, even at the U-20s, Philip Roberg wasn't that special. He only had a goal and, well, in a total of seven games. So that one's tough, right? That's tough. But you think about it, right? He is an 18-year-old. He's playing pro hockey. He's gotten drafted, but number eight overall by the Oilers. It's like there's a lot that has happened for Philip Roberg this year. And I think the big part... Part of it all is just sitting here taking a breath back and realizing, guys, we have no reason to rush Philip Roberg. This this is the crazy part, right? We got Bouchard. We've got Jones. We've got Bear. We've got Samarukov. We've got guys that are capable of doing the job. Don't forget that we've still got Nurse. Don't forget that we've still got Clefbaum. Russell for another year. Like, we have got guys in the system here that can do the job for the foreseeable future before we have to worry about rushing Philip Broberg into the NHL lineup. And that's that's kind of also the good part about sending him back to Sweden for another year, I think, is that by the time you get him to the AHL, he may play 20 AHL games and jump right into the NHL because he's played two and a quarter years pro and he is ready to make that jump, right? If he goes out there next season and explodes in Skeleftia, and then comes up and tears up the AHL at 21, 22, what would he be? No, he'd be 21, I think, at that rate. You know what? You'd have no other choice. And the way the NHL is going, as much as you want to bring along a prospect slowly, by 21, if they're exploding in the AHL, you just end up bringing them up to the NHL because you got to see what you have anyway. That's just the way it works right now. So I'd be totally fine with that. No problem about it, right? 20 AHL games? He's already had two seasons pro under his belt. What more does he need? He just needs to make that adjustment to the pro North American game. And I mean, if you can't do that in 20 games, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be that elite if you can't just make the transition in 20 pro North American games. But that said, right, again, something to be said for not having to rush him. We don't have a need. Yes, by then, the expansion draft next season will have gone through. There's a lot of friggin' variables when it comes to what happens with Philip Broberg, but for now, this is just the easy path forward, the right path forward, and we just continue on down the path to getting going where we need to go with a guy like Philip Broberg, and hopefully, hopefully, it all works out, right? And I think it would absolutely will, as long as we continue to stay the course and do 
things right. But that said, if he's coming to training camp, I expect that a little bit to maybe be an eye opener in one way or another, and then we'll start seeing. Because I know there's still division on Philip Roberg as to who is liking him and who is not liking him. So we'll see what ends up happening here, guys. That's the news today. I'm Tyson, this is Stolen TV. I will catch you in the next one.